Product analytics enable you to gather and analyze data about how users interact with your Nuxt.js app. To show you how to set up analytics in this tutorial, we'll create a basic Nuxt app, add post hog on both the client and server, and use it to capture page views and custom events. All right, so now to demonstrate the basics of post hog analytics, we are going to create a simple Nuxt 3 application. And this tutorial is completely based on Node.js version 18 or higher. So make sure you already have have that installed on your machine. Now, once you have your directory open, let's go ahead and just paste in mpx nuxi at latest init and then a project name. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to say Nuxt Analytics. This will download all the dependencies we need for our application. Now, the very first question it's going to ask you is what do you want to use as your package manager? I'm just going to press enter for NPM. And then usually it asks one more question after it gets down downloading all the dependencies that we need. And that's if we want to create a Git repository or not. Um, for this tutorial, I'm going to say no. So I'm going to click in, but feel free to select whichever one, which is best for you. All right, so do you want to initialize a Git repository? I'm going to click in for no. All right, so now the very first thing we want to do is make sure we CD into our Nuxt analytics folder. So when we have to do new stuff, it's already in that directory. Now let's open up our new Nuxt application and say right click new folder and we're going to create a new folder called pages. Now inside pages, we're going to create two new files. The first file is going to be index and our second file is going to be about. So if we come over here and we just say new file, we can say index.vue and then we can create the same thing and just say about.vue. Inside our index, let's go ahead and add a new template with a div tag and an h1 tag that says home and then a Nuxt link that goes to about. Let's now go into our about file and paste in a new template with a div tag that says about with a Nuxt link that goes back to our index file. Now there's only one more change we need to do. Let's go ahead and go into our app file and paste in a new template with a div with a Nuxt layout with a Nuxt page inside. Now, if we go ahead and we go down to our terminal and we say npm run dev, this is going to start up our Nuxt application. So if we open up our Chrome browser and we refresh, we can see that we can go back and forth between our home and about page by clicking on these links. All right, so let's go back into our terminal, kill our application, and then do a npm install post hog dash js. This will download all the dependencies you need to be able to use post hog. So after we install those dependencies, let's go into our nuxt.config.js and let's overwrite all of that to use our defined nuxt config where we're passing in a runtime config with a public object that takes in our post hog public key and our post hog host. Now, if you need to know what your post hog public key and post hog host are, you can go into your post hog application, go down into settings, and right here we can find our post hog host. So I'm going to copy that and paste it right here. And then I'm going to grab the string right before, which is going to be our API key. So now if we come back in here, we can just paste that in as well. So our Nuxt application is already configured with post hogs, public key and post hog host. So now what we want to do is come back up here and let's go ahead and create a new folder called plugins. So right here, we can just right click and say new folder and type in plugins. And now inside our plugins, let's go ahead and say new file where we're going to create a new file called posthog.client.js. Perfect. And now inside here, let's add some new code where we're going to import our define Nuxt plugin from app, import our posthog from posthog.js. We are then going to define a Nuxt plugin where we have our Nuxt app getting in and then an arrow function where we're creating our runtime configuration. And then we're creating our posthog client and we're passing in all the information we need from our runtime config that's in our Nuxt config. So we can see our runtime config and then our public with our posthog public key and host. And we're just passing that in as our define Nuxt plugin. Now, if we go back into our application and we just say, npm run dev and we open up our project and we kind of click around maybe refresh a little bit and we go back into our settings for our post hog and we click activity we can see that we have some new activities of a page view and then a page leave and then we click between the back home button 
Now, one thing that we can see is that there's only a page view when we're refreshing our web browser. There's no page view happening when we click the link, even though that's a new page. Uh, Nuxt is a spa application, so single page application. So it doesn't know necessarily that we're creating a new page view each time. So we need to configure that into our application for post hog to be able to create a page view for each new browser or each new link clicked. So let's go back into our post hog client.js and right here, let's overwrite our define Nux plugin to now use a little bit more code. And what we added here was we have our capture page view to now equal false. Now this needs to be manually set to false so we can capture everything after each router dot after each. And then inside here, we're creating a new router for our use router. And then after each, we are going to be capturing the event of page view. Now, just beyond page views, there might be more events you want to capture. You can do this by capturing custom events with post hog. Now to showcase this, we can add a button to the home page and create a custom event whenever it's clicked. So let's go ahead and update this inside our index.view page. So right here, we can go ahead and just overwrite what we have in index to now use a little bit more code. So we now have a script inside with a post hog that uses our Nuxt app. Now we are going to capture Max the Hedgehog when the button is clicked. So if we reopen up our application, there's going to be a new click me button where if we click this a couple times, that's going to create new activities. So if we reload our application, we can see that there was some things created just a few seconds ago. And if you come up to here and you say add filter and we want to add a filter by a username, we can come over here and say Max the Hedgehog. And here we can see that we created this event just a few seconds ago that each time the home button is clicked, we are capturing a value of Max the Hedgehog. Now, Nuxt is a full stack framework. Parts of it runs on the client and on the server side. And so far, we've only used PostHog on the client side with the PostHog JS library. However, PostHog JS library will not work on the server side of Node.js or Nuxt.js. So what we need to do here is go ahead and inside our terminal, let's go ahead and just add npm install PostHog dash node. Next, we need to initialize post hog node wherever you'd like to capture events on the server side, such as in your server routers or in a middleware. And in this tutorial, we're going to do a middleware. So what we need to do now is go inside our server and let's create a new folder inside our server called middleware. And now inside this directory of middleware, let's create a new file called analytics.js. And now inside our analytics.js file, let's go ahead and just paste in some code for our define event handler, which is a runtime config for our use runtime config, where we create a new post hog object, which takes in our API key and our post hog host. And then we're going to capture an event called in the middleware. So now if we go ahead and say an npm run dev, and we go back to our application, we can see that it's going to reload. And if we go back into our activity for our post hog and we say reload, we can see that there's a new event called in the middleware where there's a placeholder for the distinct ID of the user. So if you wanted to pass in some kind of object, but really what we're trying to show is how you can be in the middleware of a Nuxt JS application. All right, so now one thing to really call out here is this await post hog dot shutdown. Make sure you always call this after capturing events on their server side. Post hog queues events into larger batches, and this call forces all batched events to be flushed immediately. Now, you may have noticed that we set the distinct ID to that placeholder distinct ID of the user. So right here, we can see that we pass it in. To attribute events to the correct user, distinct ID should be set to the user's unique ID. For logged in users, we typically use their email as the distinct ID. However, for logged out users, you can use the distinct ID property from their post hog cookie. So let's go ahead and update this real quick to use the export default define event handler, where we're going to be adding some cookie information in here with a cookie string where we're able to capture the headers of the cookie or just return a empty string. And if there is a cookie match, then we're going to parse the value and be able to grab the information out of the cookie to say whatever that distinct ID is. So then when we capture the post hog event, we're capturing the parsed value of the cookie instead of just passing it a static string. So if we come back in here and we rerun our application and we reopen up our browser, 
We can wait until it's done loading. Now, if we go back into our activity and we say reload, we can now see that the person is going to be this string instead of just saying placeholder distinct ID of the user when we're in our middleware. All right, and that's it. That's how you can set up PostHog in a Nux.js application, either on the client or server side. And I'll see you in the next video.